people deluded i'm back again apparently arsenal executives are flying to meet with the cronkies we've been linked with yokerez and kudus once again Mikel moreno has spoken about arsenal's title challenge flamini actually wants to invest in arsenal and there's a couple of other bits and pieces for us to go over so if you give me two secs we'll share our screen and we'll get into it as usual smash the like button and all of that good stuff and don't forget to leave a comment as i said let me share my screen let's crack on now simon collins of the standard has said Arsenal's transfer priorities made clear with Kroenke's meeting this week. January business will be top of the agenda as Gunners Chiefs travel stateside during the international break. Now, what do you lot make of that? Because some would wonder, you know, while you could be happy with the signings of Mikel Marino, Calafuri, you know, Sterling ain't done nothing at the club, but getting in another uh, attacking body and getting a goalkeeper in Neto. Some would say we addressed areas, but in terms of squad depth, have we made ourselves stronger? We signed a lot of good squad players and players that can challenge and give Arteta a lot more but was there any curtain raises and as we all know how optimistic can we be about January deals of course while Arsenal don't historically do great business in January obviously we've signed a Bamian and plenty of players but as we all know forgive me if I'm wrong the January transfer market is very reactive reactionary and very reactive players running down their contracts players not happy with the first team football and obviously those players that are an exceptions to the rules you know because that's how we got Trossard and, and Jorginho um, you know, you look at Kivio, that's not going to cost too much money, or you might have to pay an inconvenience fee. You know, we'll get on to Yokerez, but if he was going to buy Yokerez at this moment in time, in January, Sporting are probably going to tell you it's activate his release clause or leave us alone. In the summer, they might say the same thing, but there might be a bit more flexibility. Let me know your thoughts. Arsenal's executives are flying to the US this week for a meeting with the Kronke family. The meeting has been in the diary for a while, long before sporting director Edu resigned last week, and there'll be plenty to discuss. Senior Arsenal executives, including managing director Richard Garlick and chief vice chair Tim Lewis, met with Josh and Stan Kronke around this time last year, with the November international break viewed as an opportune moment to get together. So maybe it's just a progress check and simply put checking the temperature around the club how the gaff is feeling what we feel we need to do um and and things of that ilk among the items on the agenda will be the next two transfer windows as arsenal like to plan ahead with their business i mean i'm sure they planned ahead in the summer and i i understand you know think you can't do everything but did we really have the summer we looked at to really think we could make a push of things at this moment in time? Because as much as there's a lot that could be fixed with our existing options on the footballing field, I personally feel a lot of what we're annoyed about or ultimately what's meeting our demise or an inability to cope with injuries can be sourced back to the transfer window last summer. But that's neither here nor there. We've gone past it. Inject some pace and magic out wide. Boy, this should be at the top of Arsenal's priority list. The club were in the market for a new winger last summer, but Nico Williams opted to stay at Athletic Club. Williams has a 48 million release clause in his contract and Arsenal could return for him at the end of the season, although they'll likely face competition from Barcelona and other top European sides. He's not really doing the business for Bilbao this year. Williams feels like the perfect signing for Arsenal, given his age and undeniable talent. The 22-year-old would represent an upgrade on left wingers Martinelli and Trossard, who have both struggled this season. Yeah, Martinelli's only got three goals this season, and Trossard's been a bit of a villain, you know, getting sent off against City, you know, upset against Aston Villa. Obviously, his back pass led to William Saliba getting sent off, missed a penalty against Shakhtar, and missed a couple of sitters against Chelsea. Big up Trossard, because you're just in a bad moment at this moment in time, but fair enough. Um, we've been linked with Eze. I mean, we'd love all three of these players. You know, if you could have an informed Kai Havertz, you've got Martinelli in the squad, you've still got Trossard, you've got Saka, you've got Isaac, a real gunman number nine, you've got an Eze who can play out wide as well as the 10, as well as the eight, you know, and Nico Williams, we'd be laughing. But, you know, one of the, well, you could argue, well, Nico Williams is a case of persuading him to ditch Barcelona or hoping Barcelona leave him alone and other clubs were able to pip in that regard. Eze, it comes down to money, really. You know, Crystal Palace are flush with cash. I'm pretty sure they're braced to lose Gerhi and Eze, but you're going to have to pay to make it worth their while, such as life in the Premier League. Is that whether Newcastle get Champions League football is another story, but we all know it, come, it comes down to money. Like, how much... You know, you sign all three of them. You're talking over 200 million. You Let's say anything from on a good day, 70 million to Isaac. Realistically, you're, you're pushing into the 90s, 100 million. Nico Will let's just assume Isaac's 100 million. Nico Williams, 48 million. So that's 148. And what would we say around Eze? 50, 60? If you're, if you're Palace, you probably want to push that a bit more. Uh, 
We'd all love a, another striker. We've been linked with Isaac, as we know. Sesco signed a new deal. Apparently, he could be available, as it says here, for 60 million. You've seen some reports say that he could be available for 75 million. Some have said he's got a 55 million release clause slash agreement with Leipzig. I guess we will not know. But one thing's for sure that, you know, Kai Havertz is doing all right, but he's just not that guy. Gabriel Jesus, the less said on him, unfortunately, the better people. We all know we need an alternative for Odegaard, but you could argue you had one with Smith Rowe and Fabio Vieira who have left the club either on loan or permanent. You've got young Ethan. Obviously, in terms of creativity, I think Ethan is somewhat a like-for-like -like one with Odegaard, but I don't think Mikel Arteta is looking at that. He wants all the other aspects in terms of what he's doing in midfield. So I don't think he thinks Ethan is the right tool available for what he wants in midfield currently, people. But it would be nice to find alternative slash competition for Odegaard. How far does the competition go? Unless you're going to find a prime Mesut Ozil, a David Silva, them kind of players there, you're not going to get that. But one thing we do need is to be able to cope without Odegaard. I know we won a couple of games, fans were saying we don't need him. We lose a lot defensively. We clearly lose a lot in, in the creative third. Even with Odegaard, you can't expect one creative man to change all of this club's fortunes. You know, you look at the Invincibles, they were all creative. You had Omri you had Burkamp, you had Perez, you know, you had Patrick Vieira doesn't get enough praise, you know, when you think of him, six foot odd, tackler, all of that, but his technical quality, go to the Emirates era where it was the more diminutive players, you couldn't pay Arsene Wenger to not play these attackers, you know, we had the Santis, the Cessis, the Nazris, you know, the Ramses, the Wilshers, you know, other players who could do things as well at the, of a technical level, but it doesn't seem that's the thing at this moment. It doesn't seem like, honestly, there's any substance here, it just seems like they're just saying what we know we need as an Arsenal fan base, we like a centre midfielder, particularly someone that could fill in the Odegaard role. We know we need a striker and a winger. And we probably need to find a resolution around the goalkeepers because the Dan Bentley thing didn't work. Juan Garcia didn't work. Neto is here on a loan. Whether we extend, that's another thing. And we all know Jorginho and Partey's contracts are winding down. Partey will be interesting because, as we all know, it's another case of a player in the last year of their, their contract playing out of their skin in a real good patch of form. So we have to go. The Sporting Lisbon director, or better yet, president said, I can't promise anything when speaking about Jokerez. If a club arrives, arrives, apologies, and pays the release, Claude, if he wants to go, he will go. But I do not think this will happen in January. And some of us, and let me know your thoughts, do you think we need to act in the transfer market? Obviously, in terms of squad depth, we've indirectly discussed that. But do you think we need to sign a strike, a winger, central midfielder, or just a player to give us a boost in what's left of the season? Now, we've got about two months to go until January, so it's somewhat irrelevant but there you have it there um so yeah he said all it takes is a club of course to stump up the suggested 100 million euros in brackets 83 million and Jokerez is on the move but it seems that this reality happening is unlikely i don't i don't know anything because we did try to we didn't get it done but we did we were prepared to commit a one a bunch of money to mudrick a couple of januarys ago was it not in january we was committed to try and get kai Sado. so you never know but you know how much and it wouldn't matter because obviously if you buy your Caress, who's a number nine, then in theory, you, you spend a bit less in the summer because you can address other areas. But will the club be prepared to commit a hundred million, well, 80 to a hundred million, whatever in January without factoring who's leaving the club, what they're doing with contracts? Because we all got to remember all of this stuff factors into your transfer budget. But let me know your thoughts. Would any of you take Christopher Nkonku? I've asked this. I'm going to ask it again. Apparently, Chelsea aren't fully against selling Nkonku in January as long as they get the 52 million they paid for him. You know, they paid 70 million for Kai Havertz. We gave him 65 million. You never know. We have dealt with Chelsea, the latest being in the summer. I feel sorry for Nkonku, really. Chelsea are still linked with another striker. Obviously, Nicholas Jackson's the first name on the team sheet. Nkonku can play up front as well as in other roles, but it doesn't seem like he's favoured in that regards. Hasn't been able to stay fit. And there was a lot of hype about his signing. I'm Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure he was one of those where they signed him in like January and announced he would sign in the summer. Barcelona have apparently joined Arsenal and Bayern Munich in the hunt for Jokerez people. Uh, apparently, Mikel Arteta is reportedly furious with the performances of Sterling in training and is already questioning whether he made a mistake to sign him. Now, to be fair to Sterling or Mikel Arteta, we don't know this, but Sterling isn't getting game time. And I would say the Inter Milan game is the first time I thought, yo, you know what, whether you rate Sterling or not, he's on the bench, you signed him. However you got to sign him, you signed him on loan. Why did he not come off the bench? And we know Mikel Arteta is a stickler for training and performing. I don't really want to get on this. I don't think he will do that because I don't I don't believe this. You never know. Maybe he's training well, but just not well enough. Maybe he's training poorly and he's complacent. But I don't believe that because I think Sterling's worked with Arteta before. 
obviously Sterling wants to play football and coming into this club, you weren't one of the first names on the team sheet, regardless of Martinelli's form. I, I, and at 29, you're at a crossroads because you either have to convince Arsenal to buy you permanently, convince Chelsea somehow to reintegrate you next season or convince some other employees in which I don't know if a traditional top six side is going to sign Raheem Sterling. Either way, the best thing that he can do to change his reality is training and performing well and obviously doing his thing. But that hasn't been the case. So I'm, I don't read too much into that. But you lot let me know your thoughts. I've made 10 billion since leaving Arsenal. I wouldn't rule out Gunners' takeover. I would because I can't see the Cronky selling anytime soon, Flamini. But nonetheless, he's indirectly signaled his intentions to get involved in Arsenal. Oh, uh, sorry, football is the number one sport. It is driving so much attention. The hot issues of this world should also be on the agenda of governing bodies. It's a world that I belong to. If there is the right opportunity at the right time and the right discussion, if I meet people who are the same vision and mindset and desire to use football for a purpose, I'd love to. Obviously, those clubs in brackets, Arsenal and Marseille, have a special place in my heart. I never forget where I come from. In life, you never know. But it's all about the right opportunity. I'm a firm believer in the right place, right time, right people. We'll see what the future is made of. I'm a believer if you want something very much, the universe usually brings it to you. Let's see what the universe will bring. When speaking about buying the Gunners, no, don't ask me how I'll be involved in football because it's not something I've always thought about, but it's definitely something which I've been part of my life forever in my life. I always want to be part of this community. Shout out Flamini randomly, but I was watching, do you remember the early Emirates era where Galas, Colo Torre, and I believe Flamini scored and we won 3 0 against Liverpool? Big up Flamini in that regards, man. Done all right, post career, isn't it? Making 10 billion, some smart investments. Talk about financial freedom. Must be nice. Smash the like button. Apparently, Manchester City are keen to get rid of Jack Grealish and he's been linked with Spurs. Is that something we should get interested involved in? Let me know. Zuba Mendy is still drawing interest from Manchester City and they join Arsenal and Liverpool with clubs that have been credited with an interest. This is probably off the back of. One, I don't think City and Pep Guardiola have a plan B if Rodri's not there. And two, they probably need another midfield reintroduction. You know, you've got Kevin De Bruyne missing. Gundogan, Gundogan's not really having the return that City would like. Obviously, Rodri's not being utilised because he's injured. So you never know. I mean, who could convince Zuba Mendy to leave Sociedad more than Pep Guardiola? But Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United and Bayern Munich have all not had luck in that regards, man. Zuba Mendy would be great for us. Arsenal are considering contract extension for Saliba. What do you mean considering for the 23-year-old? That needs to get done. From next summer, William Saliba, Bakayo Saka, Big Gabriel, Gabriel Martinelli, all are, are, um, from the summer will have a year or so, or 18 months, I believe, on their deal. So we're going to need to sort that out immediately because Real Madrid are still apparently in the mix room and apparently they're eyeing up a January move which I don't necessarily believe but there you have it and they're suffering we've all been linked with Leroy Sane when I say oh I think all of the traditional top six sides and Spurs uh, Bayern Munich have made a decision over him apparently they've ruled out the possibility of him leaving in January with both Manchester United and Arsenal both monitoring the situation apparently all parties in relation to Bayern Munich and Sane all parties are keen and optimistic about coming to an agreement over an extension so this is why I don't read or take too much stock in being linked with players that have a year left on their deal you could throw Kimmich into there and also Manuel Neuer who looks like he's falling off you never know though if the, the the talks hit a bit of a blip january's a serious well the only kind of time they have to sell him so we'll have to see what's going on with sane Odegaard is out of the norway games and is listening to his body apparently he flew to oslo for the nation's league fixtures against Slovenia and kazakhstan which i'm not on apparently he said after discussions with the medical staff at the national team we have unfortunately concluded that the situation is not good enough to play in these games which is music to my ears you always want to see players play for their countries but Odegaard, we've just got you back Actually, don't you've been missing for time. When was the last time we saw Odegaard prior to the cameo against Inter and the start against Chelsea? I've been through a long training period, and when you haven't practiced football in the last nine weeks, it's not natural. It's natural, sorry, to not be 100%. I need to listen to my body, complete this rehab process, and get my foot back in good shape. The hope has always been to be able to play in the national matches. If I hadn't played on Sunday, it would have been out of the question to participate anyways. It's a very bad feeling to lose these games. I love playing for Norway and with this team. It's true, man, and obviously... You know, Bakayo Saka and Declan Rice are among eight withdrawals from the England squad. And we hope where Declan Rice and his broken toe is concerned and Bakayo Saka, they're right. Spare a thought for Declan Rice. I know I'm being a bit silly, but you've got a broken toe. The gaffer's making you still take the the, the dead balls and the, the crosses and the corners and whatnot. And a bit like, 
Saka on one leg is still going to play under Mikel Arteta. Our gaffer's really much on tough love. Music to my ears if Arsenal get this done and it's the second player we'd sign for big money from West Ham. Arsenal are ready to spend 83 million on West Ham's Mohamed Kudus with a 24-year-old keen to join the Gunners to play European football. After seeing the RG Bargy against Spurs, I'm all on that. I have to be that guy. I think, you know, our fa fans, including myself, we've been wrong about a lot of signings, but we were on Kudus from when he was at Ajax and I have to be that guy and say, why didn't we sign him at Ajax? Because you wouldn't be paying 83 million. I'm having him. He's 24, Premier League proven, got a positive chip on his shoulder, can cope with pressure. One of the star boys for West Ham. And I'm sure you all saw the last AFCON, you know, and the Ghana fans and the journalists were quite crazy. One person they felt sorry for is Kudas. He's versatile, you know, at technical level, skilled at Ajax. I think he would fit us like a glove. Competition slash a deputy for Saka, can play off the left, can play in midfield as well. And he's a player fans will like, man. Like He's a Bobby Dazzler of sorts, man. Gets goals as well. So, yeah, Kudus is still linked with Arsenal Football Club people. But don't, don't, these reports are coming out of Spain. Now, Arteta Spanish, maybe the local media have connections, but two English clubs, Ghanaian International, the initial news coming out, not from local West Ham sources or Arsenal sources, is here. And, uh, you know, you look at the athletic, Kudus is a player, one of the players that Sesko in prior to obviously signing David Rye that Arsenal have accredited interest in. So I don't know. I think you have to take a pinch of salt. But, you know, Arsenal are reportedly eyeing up the potential transfer of West Ham United star Mohamed Kudus in a deal that could be worth as much as 100 million euros, which equates to about 85 odd. Can't see us getting Kudus and your careers, but it'd be lovely people. Be amazing, man. It'd be amazing. I don't I don't know his stats at the moment, but I wouldn't say he's setting the world alight currently in the Premier League and he's obviously serving a ban. But for me, I'm all for it. Got pace as well. You know, like it says here, pace, skill and a goal for it. It wouldn't come cheap, but you could argue we're at that stage now where you either sign these men when they're at the Ajaxes or the Sosia does in Isaac's case, or you go for Jokeres before this kind of storm. Or you just pay the going rate because I do think we need a couple of signings. But you could argue this club, this this squad doesn't need major surgery. So if you're spending less, could you be? If you're buying less players, could you spend a bit more and be a bit more dearer? I'm not sure. You know, I do think we're at that point a bit like Liverpool in the sense of you know obviously they these players went off to do great stuff, but they had they made smart additions. You know, Sane, Salah. Uh, well, now do at the time. Uh, Robertson, these guys weren't individually eye-catching. They've gone off to do things. Firmino, they've built the squad. They improved on the tactical front, game management, defending, all of that kind of stuff. Then they signed Allison and Van Dijk for big money to take them to the next level. Now, we've done that with Kai Havertz, whether you believe it or not, 65 million. We've done that with Declan Rice. But is that now where we're kind of at? where we just need to improve, like raise the ceiling of the 11. I'm not sure, people. Let me know your thoughts. Sane, once again, is keen on signing a new deal at Bayern Munich. Once again, Saka and Declan Rice are among eight players to withdraw from the England national team. Apparently, Ramsdale's even picked up an injury. Mikel Moreno, who for me had a very good encouraging cameo against Chelsea. And for me, with Arsenal fans, have been written off. I, I, I think it's a bit where... Before the man kicked the ball, he was a guy that's going to change our fortunes and do this and that. I'm not knocking Mikel Moreno because I've actually defended him because he's been injured. He's adapting to the Premier League. Anytime he's played poor, the whole team's been played poor. And he has had some encouraging games. Liverpool, Chelsea, the sub appearances in the Premier League prior to that and whatnot. But I've always maintained, I've, I'm not saying he can't be a first team regular and get minutes, but I think he's a floor raiser rather than a ceiling raiser. He's someone that complements the squad. But I like how he's talking, apparently. He said... I think you, when spoken about the pressure we're on now, I think you have to enjoy that. I think you want to be in a, if you want to be a big club, you want to achieve big things. You have to love pressure. Pressure is a privilege. You have to love playing against the best and for the biggest trophies. The mentality that these players have is to try to be the best every single day, every single training session. That says a lot about this team, but it's not only about wanting to do it. You have to show it. We are showing it in training sessions. We have to show it in games as well. And for sure, I think we will. We have to look at the positives. We have to look at ourselves, at how we want to perform and not start thinking about what is going to happen if we lose that's adding pressure we know we have to win every game we know that we want that and we work for that in order to achieve that we have to focus on the present on ourselves on improving and getting better that's what we're going to do fair enough i don't think you can disagree he did also say right now we are at a moment where i think where we have to think about the next step about the next training session don't look too far ahead of ourselves because the small steps are the ones that are going to build the long run. So just focus on the next thing. Try to do the best training session. Try to win the next game. Put the best performance possible. And from there, we will start to build. I think the mentality and the character that these guys are showing is just unbelievable. You can see it just after conceding the goal from 
uh, away from home against Chelsea, against a team who is normally dominant and you are the ones who are dictating the tempo and attacking and creating chances. This is a big sign for what this team is about. I'm a positive person and I hope for the future the results are coming and that this team will grow. Fair enough, my friend. Real Madrid are monitoring Ajax's Joel Hato, who, as you know, was linked with us. Unfortunately, we've dropped six points from our opening 11 games and, you know, Fair enough. We, I, I, we were we did have ten men against City and Brighton, but we were in the driving seat. We did have a lead. It would have been lovely to hold on to that. The same said for Liverpool, and actually the same said for Chelsea. Newcastle, the performance was woeful, and Bournemouth was probably the worst run of the, the worst game of these eleven games so far. So yeah, dropping silly points, shooting ourselves in the foot at times. Don't think that's anything relevant. I not want to endorse ITKs, but apparently Arsenal aim to have Calafuri back by the end of November, in which we're approaching the last two weeks. I mean, you, Tommy Asu, we need you lot, man. You know, Timber's been been probably played a lot more than I think medical and culture staff would have liked. Benjamin White's had a bit of knocks. Obviously, Gabriel's picked up a knock. We've missed Saliba through injury. And just in terms of game management, man, like dying embers of the game against City would have been lovely to have a stronger stronger defensive options. I would definitely say against Chelsea, we could have de dealt with that as well. Big up Nuno Tavares. Since he's gone Lazio, I don't rate him to be fair. And I'm yet to hear he's had a great defensive performance, but he's assisting for fun. And he's been called up to the Portuguese national team. So yeah, Lazio you're probably going to make some decent money on him. Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester City and Chelsea apparently are keeping tabs on Isaac as Newcastle contract talks rumble on. Keeping tabs doesn't mean we're going to move anytime soon. So, yeah, I would love to be wrong in that regard and I'd love to sign Isaac. But we've discussed a lot, people. Let me know everything that we've gone over. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, stay safe, stay blessed. Peace. <laughs>